where we're standing. This is the exact spot Les discovered that lockbox. Now, in addition to the DM marking that lockbox, there was a serial number on it. The serial number, which Les was able to track back through local county courthouse records, to an 1864 sheriff's report. In the sheriff's report, he states that the James Gang had robbed the Denver Mining Company payroll from a train around Gadsdale, Missouri. He goes on to further state that he and his posse chased this band of outlaws some 70 odd miles to the mountain of Arcade. Well, the sheriff was a local boy. And he knew that these caves ended right back there in Division. At least he thought he did. Well, he decided rather than risking a gun battle with some of the most notorious outlaws in the area at the time, he would quite simply wait these boys out. <coughs> and wait he did. He waited for three days. On the third day, he very reluctantly entered into the mouth of our cave, but of course he didn't find the James Gang. He simply found their horses stumbling around in the darkness back in the division. He chalked it up to the fact that his men must have gotten drunk on watch and fallen asleep and little more was ever thought about it. But uh, we know a different story entirely, don't we, folks? We know that approximately 10 years earlier, those boys were here during that little gunpowder room we asked at. We know they would have had control of these caverns for quite some time after defeating those Union forces, simply to ensure they wouldn't show back up and get up to their old ways. We also know when you put teenagers in caves, they are bound to explore them. That's exactly what they did, because they knew about that dip back there that later on Les would swim through, and today we walk through. This time when they came through it, they had the entirety of the James Gang with them. That would include the uh, Dalton boys at that point. You see, the younger brothers, again, were here riding with them during the raid of Quantrell. They brought the entirety of their gang back here, carrying one very heavy lockbox filled with about $12,000 worth of gold and silver. And they effected their escape via an underground passageway that runs off about three quarters of a mile here to the right and drains into the Merrimack River. And ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude the Frank and Jesse portion of our tour today. I'm quite certain if you were in the same position where you were standing somewhere that no one knew existed, you had a sheriff and his posse hot on your tail, you probably would have went out of here about sundown that first night. I'm relatively sure that's what they did. But also, quite luckily for us, there are a little over 400 million years of other histories right around this corner here. So at this time, if you will head down and around the corner, we'll start to explore these lower levels a little more.